right behind me, I'm actually standing. Uh, this is where the Noah's Ark is. This place is found in the eastern end of Turkey called Dobiyazi. Typically, if you are here, you will also want to visit the Isha Pasa Palace too. From where I live in Dogus Hotel, it's only about 5 to 7 minutes away drive to Isha Pasa Palace. And from there, after visiting the Isha Pasa Palace, you can go straight to Noah's Ark, just about 17 kilometers away. On your way to the Noah's Ark, you'll get a chance to see Mount Ararat. In 1957, during the Cold War, while searching for the Soviet missile bases, a Turkish photo analyst noticed a strange object in a photo. This object was sitting about 6,300 feet above sea level. Life magazine report this incident. After that, in 1960, the US went to the site. Blowing holes in a strange formation, the team members concluded that there is nothing much of archaeological value in the site. The site was forgotten until 1977 when Ron White, who read the 1960 Life magazine article, saved enough money to travel to the site and see it for himself. And Ron took notice of the location of the Ark. That in the Bible it says that the Ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Uratu, the biblical Ararat, is a large region in the eastern Turkey. This location where the Ark lands is certainly visible. But what got his attention was the article stated that it was about 500 feet long. He concluded that the Noah's Ark would have been a little over 500 feet long because the cubit stated in Genesis would have been the royal Egyptian cubit of 20.6 inches since there was no Hebrew cubit at that time. Moses was the author of the book of Genesis and since he was educated in the Egyptian way, he would have used the Egyptian measurement. The Hebrew measurement of cubit did not come to existence until it became a nation, which happens much later. This will mean that Noah's Ark will be in the range of about 515 feet long. When Ron saw the boat light object, he knew that he needs to get permission to excavate to no further. And he also know he needs the soil to come down further. And only way to do that is to have an earthquake to reveal more. So he enlisted some of his friends to help pray for him. Barely one year later, in late 1978, he learned of an earthquake that happens in Eastern Turkey. And he came back in August 1979. The earthquake has dropped the soil around the object. The earthquake had also caused a crack along the entire length of the site. And he took measurements of the internal depth and took some small specimen. He measured the length and discovered it was 515 feet long. The biblical record states that the Noah's Ark was 300 cubits, which is equivalent to 515 feet. Ron later brought a metal detector to the site to see if there's a pattern of metal reading. He found distinct metal lines down below the object. While there was no metal detected outside the line of the object, the specimen was sent to Los Alamos National Laboratory for testing and the result was conclusive. The specimen contains manganese and titanium and aluminum. This were not in the form found in nature. Sorry. Keep walking. Do you want do you want a measuring tape to measure these things, how far apart they are? Uh, do you really honestly believe uh, that you have been on the remains of Noah's Ark? I have no no doubt in my mind there's this has to be a man-made structure. It's full of metal. The metal is, uh, has a regular pattern to it. And uh, uh, the size of the thing and the shape of the thing is uh, such that it's, it's
that's almost certainly a, a large boat. A massive ship would need metal fittings to hold the ship together. And the Bible gives evidence that the knowledge of metal was well established by the time of Noah. The biblical accounts tell of Tubal Cain, who was the seventh generation from Adam, and well before the time of Noah. In Genesis 4.22, we read of Gilead gave birth to a son named Tubal Cain. He became an expert in forging tools of bronze and iron. The entire site was placed with three different types of metal detectors. They then attached tapes to show the lines. With the width and the length known, the only question is the depth. By determining the depth of the ship, we can determine whether the ship has a cargo capacity. The next step was a subsurface interface radar. There's a longitudinal bulkhead, you ought to see them pop it out, man. Yeah, there they are. There's yeah. another one. There's the key line right there. Yeah. Oh, Ron, the lines are there! <laughs> the lines are there! Okay, we're gonna walk over. Yeah, Take a look. Leave it, leave it running so everybody knows that we're not cheating here, right? <laughs> you got it, Tom. Okay, now, this is the west, the west bulkhead. Okay, can you look through there and... All right. This is the west bulkhead. All right. That was over there. And he walked easterly. Here we start getting the longitudinal bulkheads. Here, 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 here. Okay. Here. You see there how it shows up? All right. The initial scan was very impressive. It was able to show the boat heads and the rooms. In 1986, the subsurface interface radar showed a pattern of structure within the object. Tests of a specimen from the site yielded evidence of fossilized objects with organic carbon. This proved that objects being tested had been once living such as... Yeah, is not, it does not represent natural geology. It's, it's a man-made structure. These reflections are occurring very per periodic, too periodic to be random na natural type interval. There was no longer any doubt that this structure was that of a man-made. In late 1986, the Turks announced the decision. The ceremony was set in late 1987. During that ceremony, the governor asked Juan to demonstrate the radar scan for the journalists and the military officials on site. When Ron showed them a readout that shows like an intact timber, the governor then instructed a soldier to dig right there. What emerged was this section of petrified hand wrought timber, showing it to be laminated wood with five layers of timber glued together with pitch. This further shows that rivets were used for its construction. The analysis showed that they contains iron, aluminium and titanium, very sophisticated alloy that would be resistant to water. Specimens falling out from the lower end of the ship identified as slack by an expert. This tells us that Noah filled the hole with the slag material from this production of the metal. More complete radar scan shows that the ark, although it's damaged in several places, were very intelligent and very modern design. There were RAM systems at the door which will lead to every level. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. <laughs>